Well, if you thought Toy Story 2 was an emotional gut punch, the third movie is sure to do the trick. Guys, welcome back to my Toy Story playlist. We are going through these movies like nobody else. We just celebrated the 25th anniversary of Toy Story 2, which is actually the whole reason why I wanted to just knock out all four movies. But this is the last movie of that first trilogy, or so we thought it was the last movie. As a little kid, I only had access to Toy Story and Toy Story 2 at home via those nifty clamshell VHS cases. This is actually the first time I got to witness a Toy Story movie in the theater, on the big screen, the way I always wanted it to be. And lo and behold, it turns out to be one of the biggest emotional roller coasters of my life in a movie theater. So what's our premise here? This movie actually answers a big question from Toy Story 2. What happens when Andy does grow up? In this case, Andy has grown up. He's graduated high school and he's just about to leave for college. So Woody, Buzz, Jesse, and the rest of the gang find themselves headed for the attic, but they mistakenly wind up on the curb with the trash. And Woody's quick thinking ends up saving the gang, but everybody but Woody ends up being donated to a daycare center. And this daycare center is known as Shawshank Prison. I mean, Sunnyside. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I don't know why I got my S titles mixed up there. And this prison, I mean daycare center, is run by a lovable strawberry-scented teddy bear named Lotso. Lotso ends up shunning the new toys to the caterpillar room, which is where the younger kids at the daycare go to play with the toys, and, uh, yeah, they're uncontrollable. That whole sequence feels like a horror movie, guys. So Woody actually ends up returning to the daycare to go and rescue his family, and they make plans for the greatest escape probably of all time. Actually, I don't know about that. That statement might be a little bit far-fetched. But listen up, guys. I think Toy Story 3 was a more than worthy way to wrap up this original trilogy. Even though I think it is the weakest, ultimately, of those original three movies, there's still a lot to love about it. Because it's Toy Story. How could you not love it? And excuse me when I say this, but if Toy Story 2 was an emotional gut punch... This sequel absolutely toys with your emotions. Like, these characters have so many close calls throughout this entire hour 45 minute runtime. And believe me, when I was of the age where I actually went to go and see a Toy Story movie in theaters, I was growing up with these movies, and I wanted it to go dark. I was of the age where I kind of wanted to see a children's movie, in a sense, go darker. And it absolutely did! Comparing this daycare center to Shawshank is no joke, guys. These toys are imprisoned, and you want them desperately to get out. And my god, all of these voice actors are so freaking great in this movie. Again, like, there are too many to count. Tom Hanks, once again, one of the greatest actors I think to ever live. Tim Allen, again, yeah, say what you want about him. Good choice is Buzz Lightyear. Buzz has a lot of really funny material in this. Buzz is actually tortured by our villain gang and actually reset to factory mode or demo mode. And he ends up becoming an accomplice to Lotso, who honestly, if I'm really thinking about it, very colorful Disney villain, but perhaps my girlfriend's most despised Disney villain of all time. And funny enough, his former accomplice, Chuckles the Clown, voiced hilariously by Sam Elliott, oddly enough, like, he describes Lotso as nice and huggable on the outside, but on the inside, he's a monster. And that's absolutely what he is. Ned Beatty does a brilliant job voicing Lotso here. And he's got a very tragic backstory as well. Even though I feel like there are a few plot holes here and there about how he actually came into power at Sunnyside, I feel like the movie does kind of gloss over that a little bit in hindsight if I'm going to be critiquing anything right now. But man, everything you want in a despicable villain, that's what you get with Lotto. And even then, we, we still, after this movie came out in theaters, we still got a Lotto hugging bear for the playroom. Because I have two younger brothers, like, you know, they, they go and watch this movie with me in the theaters. They wanted some of the toys. And Lotso ended up being one of the picks. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was only picked because he smells like strawberries. Strawberries are a good smell. But again, in addition to the darkness, Toy Story 3 never loses sight of what made those first two Toy Story movies so endearing and beloved. Because these characters still have so much energy, every single one of them is so memorable. Everyone's got their own roles to play in this. Rex, again, is the anxious one who just wants to be played with, and he's just ready to throw himself at anybody. Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head are a great couple in this. Mr. Potato Head takes a freaking beating in this movie. First, he's got parts being shoved up a kid's nose, probably has boogers all over him. He gets thrown in the box, which is known as the sandbox. It's actually a really funny joke. And then during the actual escape plan, 
he becomes Mr. Tortilla Head. Mr. Tortilla Head. And then he becomes Mr. Pickle Head. Or is that a cucumber? I, ca I, I don't know. I can't really tell. But Mrs. Potato Head actually has a fun gimmick of leaving one of her eyes behind in Andy's room because she can't find it. And it's actually really clever because we lose a lot of those pieces all the time when we're playing with the toys. And that actually allows us a window into actually seeing what Andy is going through and packing up for college while the toys are on the adventure. Again, I can't emphasize enough brilliant writing here. But this movie was actually nominated for Best Picture in 2010. It's the only Toy Story movie to be nominated for the Best Picture category. I honestly can't sit here and say that if I were to pick one movie to be nominated for Best Picture... Toy Story 3 isn't the one I would have selected, but I totally understand why this movie was marketed to actually be in contention for that Oscar. Because in a sense, it is the end of an era. Andy's going off to college, these toys are either going off in the attic or they're getting donated. Like, Andy's not taking every single toy to college, guys. I hate to burst your bubbles. Because that's just not real life. <laughs> I'm not going to know what to do with those toys anymore. And this movie reeks of sentimentality. Again, the first time I watched Toy Story 3 in theaters, I felt like a little kid. And especially as you get deeper into the third act, you still feel the waterworks coming. Nowhere was that more apparent than the incinerator sequence. Holy cow, do you want to scar your children? Show them the whole trilogy, and then, yeah, when they get to the incinerator sequence, they're gonna hate you. Of course they don't get burned to a crisp. They are saved by the alien squeakers. And again, clever writing because the potato heads turn it right around on the kids. You have saved our lives and we are eternally grateful. I'm eternally grateful for Toy Story, man. Because again, it never loses sight of what made that first Toy Story movie so great. There's so much freaking comedy in this movie in addition to the darkness. I love the fact that this daycare is watched over at night by a monkey with symbols. Which, Lindsay, if you're watching this, I'm sorry if you find that scary. I think it's pretty funny. Buzz Lightyear has to be the comedic highlight of this thing. Because when he's reset to factory mode, yeah, you're intimidated by him. But then when the toys are going through their plan to escape the daycare, and they try to reset Buzz back to play mode, that plan goes completely, it just like, it just falls so far off of a cliff that you just can't find it anymore. And Buzz's Spanish mode, Buzz right here on our scote! Yeah, I took Spanish classes in high school and retained precisely zero of it. You cannot deny how creative Toy Story 3 actually is. Right from the very imaginative opening sequence where the playtime sequence with Andy is actually presented to you like it's a big action western with loads of clever callbacks to the first Toy Story movie. All the way up to the very end when Andy actually does hand his toys over to Bonnie, who is a very cute little girl. I forgot to mention her. When you actually first meet Bonnie in the daycare, it's so freaking sweet. And then when she's playing with her toys and Woody is actually taken along with her, she finds Woody hanging from the tree, you kind of start to see where the movie's going. It's like, is, is Bonnie going to be the new Andy? Lo and behold, that's what happens. And listen, you can call this ending sequence all you want. You can call Andy an 18-year-old kid a dweeb all you want. If you're not crying during this whole ordeal, if you're not crying when those end credits hit, you guys probably just don't have any emotions whatsoever. And this movie is all about that. It dangles the carrot so many times. It, it makes you think that it's the end. And you feel the waterworks coming like so many times, especially in the third act and this big exciting escape. Ah, oh, God, so freaking, so freaking good, man. I didn't even mention all the new characters that we get here. Which, again, you have some very imaginative designs here. Bonnie's new toys are all very creative. Trixie has to be my favorite of the new bunch. And, of course, how can you forget all the toys in the daycare? Most of all, you actually do have a Ken doll in this. Barbie does return, and she's donated to Suddyside by Andy's little sister. She's once again voiced by Jodie Benson. Ken is voiced by Michael Keaton, of all people. Yes, Batman, Beetlejuice, Ken doll. Ryan Gosling, eat your heart out. But actually, the whole connection between Ken and Barbie in this movie is so funny. And the fact that Barbie is actually using her relationship with Ken to help free the toys. And she's torturing Ken by tearing apart all of his rare collectible clothes. Like, I'm sorry, that's hysterical. Michael Keaton is hysterical. 
Like, honestly, guys, I have a few nitpicks with this movie. There are a few plot holes in regards to how Lotso actually got the leadership position at Sunnyside. Like, did he power his way in because he's a big toy? Did he use poor Big Baby as his brute force to help him get the throne? Like, I understand how the caterpillar and butterfly mentality actually works here. The newer toys are basically being hazed, and they're basically getting initiated by the older toys before being promoted to the butterflies. Like, I get that, but how did it come to be that Lotso was in charge? Like, that's honestly my biggest nitpick with this movie, and I'm just looking for things to nitpick. This is still a damn great Pixar movie. It was absolutely worthy of being nominated for Best Picture, in my opinion, even though it's not my first choice of a Toy Story movie to receive that honor. Like, you just get that sentimental feeling when you watch this ending to the trilogy. And honestly, I wouldn't have had it any other way. I'm gonna give Toy Story 3 an A. An absolutely wonderful Pixar film that if you haven't seen by this point, I'm sure everybody and their mother has seen Toy Story 3 at this point, but regardless, let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Which Toy Story movie is your favorite? When it comes to movies and all things entertainment, this is a great channel to become a part of. You've got a friend in me if you want to discuss all these topics. So please do consider subscribing, tap on that thumbs up as well, that would be a huge help. And guys, that's it! That's the end of the Toy Story trilogy, so I guess we're gonna go ahead and wrap up now- uh <laughs> You're telling me there's another one? Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about that in the next review. Guys, thank you so much again for tuning in, y'all are the best. And with all that being said, Back Talk, commence.